Hello my dear friends, you're on the Military Summary channel and this short video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night of the local time. The thing that we can say for sure that the weather became worse and worse every single day in the CIA region, in Belarus, Russia, Ukraine and currently there are lots of snow uh, outside the buildings and obviously the Ukrainians understand and they know that if the temperature drops below 8 degrees Celsius, rolling blackouts will be applied in Ukraine for one to hours and we're talking about uh, let's say rolling blackouts without any missile strikes obviously if the russians will include uh, missile strikes against the ukraine infrastructure the rolling blackouts will be applied applied in ukraine for uh, for six hours a day and it, obviously this is going to be a disaster not just for the ukraine economy but also the most important for the deployment of ukrainian forces from one side of ukraine to another basically the main key of ukrainian success or at least not we can't call it success but the key that allowed the Ukrainians to, um, to survive and to uh, stay and hold the combat lines is the Ukrainian logistic, Ukrainian, let's say, poss possibilities to redeploy from one side to another. And if the Russians can cut this possibility, I believe the Ukrainians will be going to have lots of problems. Now let's move uh, to Kherson direction. We got a few updates from this territory during the previous night. Uh, the Ukrainians published the video how they managed to discover the Russian positions, the Russian ammo depot, and as a result of uh, strikes with JDAM, as you can see there are two holes in the roof of the building, that means that the Ukrainians used the two JDAM at once. Uh, the Ukrainians managed to destroy, destroy some warehouse. We don't have the numbers uh, neither from the Russian nor from the Ukrainian side about the uh, results of that attack, but maybe this is just like another attack and media a victory from the Ukrainian side. Russians from their side are to continue bombardments of the uh, cities and villages along Dnipro River with Fab 500. And so this is the same thing they are trying to do every single day. When talking about Krynki itself, we got today just one update. Very interesting, by the way. Just the message. The Russians are saying that as a result of counter-attack, they managed to start capture a few prisoners of war in Krynki. And the Russians reported that everyone has frostbite on their feet. So that means that uh, those Ukrainians who were sent on the Russian bank of the river months ago still haven't been rotated by the Ukrainians and over the place and as I understand uh, this um, like a uh, piece of news confirms our suggestion that uh, the redeployment on this bank of the river is one way ticket there are no way back the only way back is probably to surrender to the Russian forces so no changes on the ground now we are moving to the Parozhye direction we got also some interesting updates from this territory the Ukrainians during the previous day tried to concentrate their forces on the north of uh, Novoprokopovka if you remember during the previous days we discussed that the Ukrainian made a lot of attempts to attack the Russian positions uh, to uh, storm Novoprokopovka from many directions using the broad frontline attacks but all, all Ukrainian attacks were repelled by the Russians and the Ukrainians were forced to step back on this yellow line and during the previous night the Russians were bombing and attacking the Ukrainians those who managed to survive during the uh, waves of attacks uh, they try, those Ukrainians tried to dig in deeper along these uh, trenches and now the Russians are trying to hunt and destroy abandoned Ukrainian forces in this area so nothing special obviously the Ukrainians after uh, an attempt to concentrate critical mass and after they were defeated will lose the rest of the critical mass they managed to collect on this direction now we are moving further to the south the nearest direction and we got very interesting videos from Nova Mikhailovka uh, one more time before start watching this video if you remember uh, these days uh, those days the previous week we got one revolutionary video from Krynki direction I will show you we will take a look at this video one more time and uh, I'm talking about the usage of FPV drones with night vision above uh, let's say the Dnipro River this is not just the military technology new military technology this is revolutionary military technology uh, I'm talking about the complete control over the Dnipro River and complete uh, absence of possibilities from the Ukrainian side to control their presence on the Russian bank of the river so uh, uh, that this, of course this is obviously revolutionary technology that can change change even the situation on the ground but uh, the thing that I didn't expect that the Russians uh, were able or I are able to spread this technology all over the combat line and I was very surprised when today this night we got the video 
from the same squad, Sudaplat of Platoon, Sudaplat of um, FPV drone operators, they published a series of videos of FPV drone strikes with night vision in Novomikhailovka. So this is basically the end of Novomikhailovka. As you can see on this video, uh, this is during the night period of time, we see significant number of Ukrainian forces who were moving from one part to another. We Now we can see the redeployments of the Ukrainian forces that we couldn't see during the daylight basically because of absence of um, uh, any uh, night vision equipment and so on. The Russians were bombing the Ukrainians during the night, but basically they were attacking the Ukrainians based on the uh, positions they managed to discover during the daylight. And obviously during the night the Ukrainians changed their position because also they managed to adapt to the Russian um, the tactics in the past. And now the Ukrainians also don't have a solution against the Russian night vision FPV drones in Novomikhailovka. Obviously it will, this, all these attacks will speed up the Russian offensive and storming operation of this village. And as I can say, I like to say this phrase that now we can start counting days when Novi Mikhailovka is going to fall. Obviously, the Ukrainians will not be able to find the solution how to reduce the negative uh, uh, sides, negative things that this night vision FPV drone equipment uh, brought to this combat line. Now we're moving to Avdiivka and we have some updates. The Russians reported, some Russian sources reported that Stepova and or Petrovska if we call this village in Russian uh, fell and the Russians established control but this is like the fourth or fifth report since the beginning of Russian offensive operations so uh, we're not going to color this territory maybe uh, th those were another speculations so let's wait but I believe that we need to discuss because we got such report um, some sources are saying that the Russians continue offensive operation and currently the Russians are storming Novomikhailovka, uh, Avdiivka from many directions and the main uh, direction obviously from the south as you can see I have updated the map on the south uh, coloring the uh, residential area the uh, Dachi, Vinogradne Dachi and the Russian control most of them some territory still remains in the grey zone and some part of this uh, residential area is in the Ukraine control and the southern part as well anyway the battle for the southern part is about to end uh, after the end of the battle for the south the Russians will uh, have to take a small operational post. Maybe they have uh, already prepared the, uh, let's say, third and fourth waves of offensive operation who waits when the first two waves will complete the clearing operation and then the Russians will start everything with the fresh forces from the beginning and they will try to dig in deeper inside the Avdiivka, trying to cut a lot of pieces of Avdiivka, let's say, from the east, south, east, from the south and, of course, uh, on the south of the quarter by the name of Himik, this one. Uh, and then we're gonna see more clashes inside of Avdiivka. Uh, furthermore, about uh, just uh, common technology improvements that the Russians uh, currently try to make and so on. Uh, according to information we have, the Russians finished uh, the, the production of the third batch of Su-34. So during the 2023, the Russians, uh, like say, product producers of this type of aircraft have already created two batches of Su-34, they were arrived, they, these batches have already arrived on the combat line, now the Russians are using them, and we see the significant increase um, of uh, the usage of FAP 500 and different types of FAP on the territory of Ukraine or Dnipro, and the Russians complete the production of another batch, so obviously this will increase the bombardments, uh, this is another more carriers of FAPs that uh, soon we're gonna see on the combat line. Another technology improvement, the Russians are trying to create their own FPV drone uh, like Baba Yaga because you know that with the Ukraine, either the Russians and the Ukrainians during the special military operation were using are using and will continue using the FPV drone by the name of Baba Yaga the drone that's like that's like mother drone that can carry other drones that can carry a lot of uh, let's say let's say grenades and so on but uh, this drone is wasn't um, military drone that drone was prepared as the agricultural drone and now the russians as you can see have created their own interface as you can see the this drone has a lot of features like night vision like uh to see uh, thermal vision and so on and the most important since in the end we can see that this drone can use the carpet bombardments of course we can't call it this carpet bombardments because these are not 5500s that were dropped from that drone but anyway this is something like imitation at least the russians are trying to um let's say 
minimize uh, the uh, possibilities of Russian aviation and to create something, some analogs of these behaviors in these drones. Anyway, soon this drone will be appeared on the combat line and these uh, new drones will give will make more problems for the Ukrainians. A lot of updates are coming from Bakhmut Artyomov's direction on this. Uh, according to information we have, uh, the Russians managed to cross the railways. At least we got another confirmation. The Ukrainians published the video, the footage, how the Ukrainians were bombing and attacking with mortars the Russian infantry during the night who was trying to cross the railways. Anyway, according to information we have, uh, this is the second confirmation of battle for Andreevka, and there are very high chances that the Russians managed to force the Ukrainians to step back, and maybe the Russians managed to establish some positions inside of these ruins. Another imp important update about um, Andreevka is that this is the first area where uh, the Ukrainians published the video of clashes between Russian soldiers, Russian stormtroopers, like Russian regular army, whatever, and the Ukrainian women. So all these three uh, pers uh, persons on the scene who is making the video and these two persons on the left and the right are women. Uh, and uh, if you have if you have access to map, you can uh, turn on the uh, sound and you're gonna see hear the uh, voice of women who were talking. And as you can see, the woman drops grenade uh, towards the Russian forces. So the real clashes between Ukrainian women and Russian soldiers have already begun. And the first place of these clashes and the first places of these clashes are taking place in Andreevka, Klishevka, area of course this is the beginning of disaster obviously uh, I can't even imagine um, uh, how can it be obviously uh, uh, I, can't, I don't have even the words how to describe the situation of course maybe the Ukrainians don't have any other option from their perspective and they are forced to use women to fight against the Russians but uh, I think that this is not like unfair we can't call this fair or unfair but I think that this is uh, something that's low, lower, be to, be, um, lower than like common morale or something like this. Anyway, let's follow this situation. Uh, furthermore, we got some updates from Klishevka area. The Russians continue their offensive operation and they continue bombardments of the Ukrainian Hill 215. And the Russians, uh, uh, the distance between the Russian positions and these fortifications is less than 600 meters. Furthermore, the Russians, after a small operational pause, restarted their offensive operation in direction of the these um, uh, railways and tree lines and with the next uh, 48 hours obviously we're going to receive some updates from this direction as well and that's it for this short video on military summary channel reminds you to condemn any violence in the world thank you for your watching subscribe to my channel put your likes join my patreon and have a good day bye bye